to Miss Felker again. Um, this time I'm going to be reading to you about um, a more of a chapter book for the older students or other the older children. So this one is one of my favorite books, and I've read this to several of my classes. It's called the Egg the Enormous Egg, and it's one of my favorites. So we're going to start with chapter one. And this is by Oliver Butterworth. Hmm. Chapter 1. My name is Nate Twitchell, but I can't help that. It's kind of a funny name, but I had it for 12 years, and I'm pretty much used to it by now. And I guess a lot of other folks have got used to it too. After the thing that happened up here in Freedom last summer. That's the name of the town I live in, Freedom. New Hampshire, sorry. And there's actually a Freedom, Indiana. It's just a little town with a few houses all along one street and a store and a church and not much else. Oh, yes, and a school. I almost forgot that. We're only about three miles from the main state line, but Pop says freedom's just as much as part of our state as Concord is, and somebody has to live near the state of Maine. My Pop runs a newspaper here in town. It's called the Freedom Sentinel, and it comes out once a week. We mail out a lot of copies to people in Effingham and Center... Ossipi and places like that. I guess that pa I guess the paper doesn't make, make make much money, but we have some chickens and a goat and a vegetable garden and that helps out. But I want to tell you about this thing that happened to us. I don't know just where to begin. I guess I better go back to last spring when Mrs. Parsons began leaving her window open. You see, she sleeps with her bedroom window shut all winter, but when it warms up again in May, she leaves begins leaving her window open at night. Pop always waits for Mrs. Parsons to open that window before he plants his beans. He says it's more dependable than the almanac. Anyway, her house is next to ours and her windows looks out on our backyard where the chicken coop is and last spring she began to complain to mom that the rooster was waking her up with this crowing. She said we ought to get rid of him. We had a family conference the next morning at breakfast. Mom said we didn't have any right to disturb the neighbors just because we wanted to keep an old rooster. Pop said he thought he might have the right to disturb the neighbors, but we'd better be not disturb Mrs. Parsons because she lets us keep our goat in her back lot. Cynthia, she's my sister, she said she didn't care what happened to the nasty old bird. That made me kind of mad because we've had that old rooster for six years now and I like him. My Uncle Julius brought him over to us from his farm in Potter Place. He's a New Hampshire Red. The rooster, I mean, and he's got a wild look in his eye and always runs at my sister with his wings flapping whenever he gets a chance. She hates him. Anyway, I said we ought to try some way of keeping the rooster quiet in the early morning, and if it worked, then we could keep him, and Mrs. Parsons could get her sleep, and everything would be all right. And how do you propose to keep a rooster quiet, Pop I wanted to know? Crowing at daybreak is a pretty strong habit with roosters. Couldn't we shut him up with somewhere, somewhere at night, I said? Could we put him down cellar and it would be dark and he wouldn't know when it was time to crow? Mom never really enjoys having any of the livestock in the house and she didn't take to the idea even when I promised to clean out his box every morning. Before we go on to the next page, I just want to show you there is a little picture and it just shows the sister being chased by the rooster. But Pop said... Why don't we try it for a little while and see how it works? After all, he said, we don't want to sentence him without a trial. If we did that sort of thing up here in Freedom, it would be a bad example to the rest of the country. In the end, Mom agreed to give it a try, and I was going to have to, the job of taking Ezekiel down cellar every night and letting him out in the morning. We called the rooster Ezekiel after a great uncle of mine. Pop says it's important to keep a name like that in the family. Well, for about a month, I went on carrying Ezekiel down to the cellar every night and carrying him out again in the morning. He didn't like it a bit, and he and used to put up an awful fuss in the evening when I tried to catch him. When I picked him up off the roost, he would squawk and beat his wings in my face, and feathers and dust would blow all around, and the hens would get all roused up and everything. I got kind of tired of doing it every day, and sometimes I wondered if it was worthwhile doing all th that just for a rooster. But you know how it is when you're doing something that's your own idea. You just can't back down and let people say, I told you so. So I kept at it, and there got to be a lot of feathers scattered around the cellar. Sometimes about 3 o'clock in the morning, you could hear old Ezekiel whooping it up down there, but it was pretty muffled, and the rest of the family didn't say anything about it. 
It was just about the middle of June when this peculiar thing happened. For about a week, I had noticed that one of the hands was looking pretty queer. She had swelled out quite a bit and was lopsided, and her feathers stuck out all over in the way a hand gets when she's too worried to smooth herself down. Pop thought she was just broody and wanted to sit, and he told me to keep shooting, shooing her off the nest, but I had an idea it was something more than that. She got to... She got so big she could hardly waddle, and I didn't have the heart to push her off the nest once she climbed up to it. So all that week, she just sat there getting more and more bulgy and looking more and more surprised at herself. Then one morning when I carried Ezekiel out to the chicken yard, I looked in the hen house to see how this hen was getting along. And my gosh, there was the biggest egg I'd ever seen. It was so big it took up just about the whole nest. And there was the hen teetering on the edge of the box with her head tilted to one side, looking at the egg as if she couldn't figure out what it was. I touched it and it had a kind of a leathery shell, more like a turtle egg. It was a sh and it was a sort of longest shape and a big as a mushmelon or even bigger maybe. I ran back to the house and yelled out that our hen had just laid the biggest egg in the world and hurry up and look at it before it explodes or something. We all tore out to the hen house and I was afraid the egg would be gone, but there it was and the hen was sitting on top of it, doing her best to cover it. She looked kind of puzzled as if this wasn't quite what she had expected, but she was going to make the best of it anyway. I sort of admired her for that. Pop thought it was some kind of a trick at first and he looked at me out of the corner of his eyes, but when he lifted the hen off the egg and looked at it carefully, they all agreed it was a real egg, but a queer one. Pop scratched his head and looked at the chicken and then at the egg and then back to the chicken again. It doesn't seem possible, he said. The eggs, the eggs are as most as big as she is. How could she do it? But what we, but what will we do with it? My sister asked. We could all have it for breakfast. Pop suggested. How many minutes would you boil an egg that size? We will not have it for any breakfast. Mom said. I won't have that thing in my kitchen. It looks like a snake's egg to me. Some snake, Pop said, but I asked why not keep it and let the hen sit on until it hatched and then we could see what would come out of it. Nothing good, I'm certain of it, Mom said. It'd probably be something horrible, Just, but just remember, if it's a crocodile or dragon or something like that, I won't have it in my house for one minute. Very well, Mrs. Twitchell, Pop said, winking at me. We'll promise not to bring any dragons into the house. He lifted up the hen back, he lifted the hen back on the top of the enormous egg. And she slipped around, fluttered her wings, trying to get her balance up there. And before we go on to the next page, there is a picture. We all went back to the house for breakfast. Pop said that egg would give him something besides local gossip to put in his newspaper for a change. Cynthia was not excited about, about the egg, the big egg as I was, but she would have to she would have been if she'd known what was going to hatch out of it. So that is it for chapter one. Um, tomorrow I will read chapter two. I hope you guys come back and enjoy this. So thank you and have a great day.